Well, it's a very young girl to have cats like that. And I said, well, it's a good girl. <laughs> yes, she is. <laughs> this is it? That's it. Oh, snap. Look, know ye that we are that old And it was then that I just learned that every single thing that I had done, from the PR internship where I was holding a celebrity's purse, to pitching new business for a marketing agency, to learning quick keys at my very first internship, like all of it, every single experience, was me learning the art of leveraging. This is how life is. You, you kind of like go down this windy, path and then you end up somewhere and then when you look back you're like damn all of that happened for me to get to this and yes the answer is yes kill the intro sis you know she's not your average show not your average show It's me, Joe. Sip my coffee. It's always the game of like, will I finish the video without spilling this cup of coffee on myself? <gasps> Stay tuned to find out. You guys have been commenting on the how I bought my house in cash at 28 video asking how did I actually make the money? And this video, I'm gonna break it down. This is the story of entrepreneurship. This is the American dream story. This is the art of turning nothing into something and that something is tangible, which is this house that I'm living in. Before we get started, a huge shout out to Teachable who's sponsoring me on this video. If you're an entrepreneur, if you have a skill, a passion that you know a lot about and you're thinking about turning it into a course, no time like the present, Teachable has their launch accelerator challenge which is the coolest way for you to finally take your passion and your hobby and turn it into a paying course the goal is to build your course in 30 days this is the magic of the internet learn a skill turn that skill into revenue live a beautiful life teachable has made a lot of creators a lot of money if you like gardening make a course on it if you like crocheting make a course on it if you're like me and just like doing a bunch of things make a course on it I'm really excited about making a course I'm gonna sign up for the challenge because I finally do need that cake in the booty so now that we got that I of the way let's get into the story i technically started with nothing but that's not true in 1998 there were approximately 26.3 million immigrants who came to the united states of those millions i was one of them you never start with nothing you always have something you have your curiosity and you have your time so before i was even legally able to work i would clean houses with my mom it was like our family trip that's what we would do on the weekend now in retrospect i look back at those times and i realize like that was the building block of me today the joanna that would go and clean the toilets and vacuum because it was the hardest task like that is the same skill set that i use today to make my living which is wild because as an eight-year-old I would lug the vacuum upstairs of office buildings, observing all of these offices and thinking, one day I'm gonna get my own office. One day I'm gonna be the one who hires the cleaning lady and I'm gonna treat that cleaning lady well. So that was my first step into this world of making money and understanding investment of time equals money. Every single time we cleaned the office, my mom would pay us. And over time, she gave us raises. So at first it was like 20 bucks, then it became 30 bucks. Then my mom started a business painting houses where I was getting paid 10 dollars an hour and I would work with her for 12 hours a day and I came out of those days feeling like money bags I was like money 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 as a 14 year old 15 year old my summers instead of hanging out with my friends I would literally offer my mom help I'd be like mom I'll work oh you're gonna work back to back to back to back I'll be there and it got to the point that by the end of the summer as a 16 year old my mom would give me my own houses so I would be the 16 year old girl flat painting houses next to like grown construction men who were asking me how I painted a wall without leaving any streaks behind. Then I was legally able to work. So at 16, I was about to graduate high school and there was a graduation requirement that meant I had to volunteer 60 hours of my time at an establishment. I didn't read the fine print because the establishment had to have been a nonprofit. But instead I walked into the chiropractor's office in my tiny town and I said, hey, can I volunteer for you? And of course the chiropractor was like, yeah, free work, sure. Quick side note, Mom didn't believe in letting me get my license at 16, so all the jobs that I had had to be walking distance because she wasn't about to give me a ride. So next scene is me pulling up with scrubs 
on a Monday morning at this chiropractor's office and this was during the summer and I start working filing paperwork 16 year old fresh face all the clients are walking in they're like 50 plus and I'm there asking the chiropractor how can I help how can I like use my skills and at the time my main skill was language right because I spoke English and Portuguese and the chiropractor said well we have this clientele of Spanish-speaking patients I didn't speak Spanish at the time by the way and I would love for you to come in and help me translate so I'm like you telling the 16 year old girl who doesn't speak Spanish she's gonna sit in the medical offices and translate for these people that are twice my age so of course I said yes I was speaking to these people who were 50 60 70 years old as if I were the doctor and in addressing these older people with medical terms that I was googling like two minutes before the consultation I had to learn the art of speaking to somebody older than me as if we're equals patients would come in and they would think I was 30 and I was 16 <laughs> at the end of the summer working there I was just so much more equipped to speak to adults, speak to people older than me. It's the nature of translating. You have to speak as though you're the authority figure because you're the authority figure's voice in a different language. By the time I graduated high school, I learned the art of communicating with adults, even though I was a teenager, which then gave me my next opportunity. My mom used to nanny this family with four kids and the dad owned this really successful marketing agency where my brother worked. So I asked my mom's boss if I could pitch him on interning over the summer before college and i awkwardly just say like hey i know you don't know my skills but i promise i can be of help i'd love to start interning i'll go to work with my brother and just make myself useful you don't have to pay me i just want to learn which again comes down to the idea of you don't start with nothing you have your time and you have your curiosity so from the beginning i was able to use that as an asset and then learn and then with those learnings actually create income. Next scene is me going to this company where there are no interns. There is no internship program. My brother's like, Joanna, make yourself useful. Which is when I learned the next greatest skill that would help me for the rest of my life. I started shadowing people. I would just ask somebody random every day, like, hey, can I just observe you working? Which is like probably so annoying for the person. But this is what I did, This and it worked. I would shadow these people and I would pick up their little mannerisms or their skills or their ability to like filter through emails quickly. And I started asking questions, which made them realize that I was catching on and capable. So they started giving me assignments. So slowly, even though there was no role for me, I made myself useful and they found a role for me. Then one day I got assigned a project and I didn't know how to do it, right? It was like over my head. So I'm panicking, I'm like, oh my God, they're gonna find out I'm a big imposter. Go to my brother's desk and I'm like, brother, how do we do this? And my brother, tough love, love that man. He's like, Joanna, I'm not gonna tell you what to do. If you haven't spent at least 10 minutes Googling and you haven't found the answer, I don't care. I don't care. And I'm like, so that was the minute that literally changed my life. Like that's the Swiss army knife of everything that I've built subsequently. Like every single skill that I have learned for the most part with the exception of communication skills has come from the internet. That's it. This isn't rocket science. I went to college. It doesn't matter. I learned all of the tangible skills that I use on the internet. So anyways, by the end of the summer, I had worked literally every single day from 9 a.m. to 6 p.m. And I didn't think I was getting paid, right? Like I was just volunteering my time. The last day of summer the boss comes to me and he says Joanna I want to thank you for your time you are more professional than a lot of my own employees and here's something to thank you he hands me a check and I open the check after I walk out of the building and it was a check for three thousand dollars which was the most amount of money I had ever seen in my life so I skipped up and down and I'm like ah! like I couldn't believe it I couldn't believe it. So I went to college. With my skills of communicating my ideas, of offering my time, I started looking for a job before I even got to college. And I researched work study and I wanted to make it strategic so I worked for the School of Business, which is super, super smart because I was able to meet the dean that would approve internships. And in my college, you weren't allowed to intern as a freshman, only as a sophomore, but because I had the inside school, because I got the job, they learned that I had the work ethic to keep up with my grades, work study, so I was one of the only freshmen that interned the first year of college. I worked as a PR intern. I was sending out products to celebrities, hoping that they would wear it in some magazine or newspaper. I was helping red carpet events. I was just like, again, making myself available. It was unpaid, but that's where I learned how to write a press release. That's how I learned the importance of contacts. That's how I learned the art of relationship building. By the time I graduated college, I did seven different internships, most of them unpaid in everything from video editing, 
branding to PR to marketing to pitching new business. I was also juggling work study jobs and I was leveraging my time and being a resident advisor because that was strategic to shed down my tuition. So a few different things that I have to say about this. If you don't have skill, you have your time. If you have your time, research opportunities that help you not only save money, but eventually save you time. So all of the things that I did from the beginning of my career in like life has been strategic. So even though I was getting a job, it wasn't just a job. It wasn't like a random store. It was like, I did have the random store jobs too, but, but an example of strategic work is like I had a job at a co-working space because when I was starting, I wanted an office, I wanted a network, but I couldn't afford it. So I'm like, okay, I'll sign up for a job here. I'll make coffee for the entrepreneurs. And then I get 24 hour access to a beautiful workspace or getting a job at the school of business. So I could make the relationships to learn how to like hack credits and hack internships or working in video editing. So I learned the skills that I eventually use to build a revenue stream. So it's really wild to think like every single step I took helped create the moment where I signed the check in my name. Like it didn't come easy, but it was building blocks. And don't get me wrong too, I had odd jobs. Like I was one of the first people that did Instacart. <laughs> I would run up and down subway steps and go to fancy New York buildings delivering groceries. Like who knew what a pluot was? It's a hybrid between a plum and an apricot and rich people really stress out if you pick a bad one. I had jobs like secret shopping. Like I went into a Doc Martin store once and pretended like I was gonna buy shoes and then had to review the customer service of the trip. I had so many random jobs from like sketchy modeling events to being a brand ambassador, trying to push lotions on people. I did all of those odd jobs though. So it gave me the freedom because at that point I knew what I wanted. I wanted to make travel videos and you can only make travel videos if you have freedom and you don't have freedom by working a stable job. By the end of college, I created a YouTube channel. It was working really well, but I still had a huge mountain of college debt to pay. So I'm like, damn, I don't have the luxury of just like being an entrepreneur because it's too scary. Like I have $70,000 coming to slap me in the face. So if I apply for a job, where would it be strategic? And then I applied for a job after graduation at a travel agency, which books corporate travel. And I got the job, but I got a part-time offer, which was amazing because I didn't want full-time. And in this job, I was able to understand the travel agency world and the power of social media. Within a year, they offered me a promotion and that's when the channel was big enough for me to say, okay, it's time for me to take the leap. So I turned down the promotion and I started working on YouTube full-time and the channel that I was building, Damon and Joe, we grew to over 1 million subscribers within the first four years of like going full-time. And it was then that I just learned that every single thing that I had done from the PR internship where I was holding a celebrity's purse to pitching new business for a marketing agency to learning quick keys at my very first internship, like all of it, every single experience was me learning the art of leveraging. And this is what I wanna to stress to you, like whether you're just starting out as an entrepreneur or you're like me and you've done it once and you're about to do it again, look around at your resources. When I first started filming YouTube videos, I didn't even own a camera or a computer with editing software. My sister had a camera. I begged her to let me borrow it. She let me borrow it. I didn't have editing software, so I went to the university university labs to use the computers that had Final Cut and everything else I just looked up on the internet. And so it's like, there's no time like the present to analyze what is it that you're good at? What is it that you wanna be good at? Learn it and make money doing it. So that's the story portion. Hope you enjoyed. And so now let me actually break down how I make money. Creators can make money in so many different ways. You make passive AdSense, you make money every time you see a little banner ad. And what's cool about the YouTube model is that you make money off of all the videos that you've ever made. So Damon and Joe has over 600 videos. This channel has like 35 videos, but you're still making passive income. Then there are brand deals. You're gonna see the teachable spot, which is something I actually believe in. And I will get paid for that spot, but then I'm also gonna build my own course, which is then gonna create another revenue stream. Then Creators often build companies, which is what I did. So I built Shut Up and Go, the travel company that has its own revenue stream. And then now I'm in the process of building Joe Club, which has its own revenue stream. I've done everything from sell merch to host in-person events, to have a membership program, to a bunch of free stuff too. Like all the content that I post is free. And in this channel, I'm like building a new identity, like the Joanna 2.0. And from the internet, I was able to secure opportunities off the internet, like 
like a freaking Netflix show. More on that later. But essentially, the internet gives you the platform to create your billboard, to create your imagination and turn it into something tangible. Like I could have never dreamed of making a company about journaling. And that's so dope, because that's something so near and dear to my heart. Who knew I could make money doing it and make people's lives better? If anybody were to ask like, Joe, what do you do? I'm in the business of turning ideas into companies that unite people for something that will turn their lives around and make them more fulfilled. And in the process, I'm more fulfilled. This is the, the greatest time to be alive. When else could you build a crazy idea and make money from it? This is it, people. And it's almost like our economy is shifting because only a few amount of people had access to wealth. And now you have scrappy people like me that are just down and gritty and and make things happen from nothing. I'm not saying that making a shit ton of money is the goal, it's not for me. For me, it's like, how can I make a lifestyle business where I can live my life and have my bills paid? Even after I paid all the debt, even after I bought the house, that's still my goal. Like, I don't wanna be the richest person on earth. I wanna know what my version of enough is, and I wanna be able to treat the people I love, which is what I'm in the process of continuing to do. Another critical step in this whole process was saving. I've always been cheap. Everything I can do to save money I'll do. Painting my nails I do myself. My eyebrows I barely do them. All the things like my hair cut it once every two years <laughs> and those are just the superficial things right. When it comes to hiring people I only hire somebody after I know how to do what they're doing and then I can direct them because then I can see if they're doing it badly and fire them before too much money has bled out of the company. And then of course there are things that I'll never want to do like I don't want to be a lawyer so I hire a lawyer but that's a percentage base. Anytime that I found a strategic job that would pay me in other ways, like pay for my housing or pay for my food or whatever I would do. The very first thing that I ever did on YouTube was I got a language school to sponsor three months of me living abroad, which meant that I wasn't getting paid, but I was living abroad for three months. And the things that I was seeing was cool enough to make videos that would eventually create the stockpile of videos that created a travel brand. Even if you're not making money, there's compensation in other ways. If you can take that opportunity and elevate it by doing more work, Work. Of course, you're gonna be working. Like, don't get me wrong. I paid in work. I paid in like true sweat equity because I didn't have financial equity. And I'm tired these days. That's why I'm like, y'all, I'm done. Can I retire? <laughs> I'm just kidding, this is just the beginning. I started bartering for things. Like I would say, I can write this blog post if you comp this thing, or I can make a video for your company as a promo reel if you give me this trip. And that is how I started traveling the world and not paying for it, which is eventually how I was able to start traveling the world and get paid for it. I love looking at the concept of an LLC. It's technically a myth, right? But like human beings have the ability to believe in an entity and to support the entity. I am really good at building an entity, giving it a brand identity, and making that revenue stream. Even my persona, Joe Franco, is an entity. Joe Club has its revenue. Joe Franco has its revenue. Shut Up and Go has its revenue. And all three of those I've distinctively made different. You could do this for the rest of your life. Like I could technically be a serial entrepreneur and just make a bunch of different companies that do different things and have brand identities but really it's all here it all comes from here i would film shows for companies and i would fly all over the world to be a host like i started actually getting jobs as a host which is really cool because i never trained for that i was never on camera before graduating college like, i just happened to be good at it because of that chiropractor time i'm telling you dude like it's so wild to be like oh yeah i have a show on netflix and it's because i walked into the chiropractor's office one day and offered my help this is how life is. You, you kind of like go down this windy path and then you end up somewhere and then when you look back you're like, damn, all of that happened for me to get to this? And yes, the answer is yes. After I've explained everything that's happened, I want to end this video with the magical bow, which is the ingredient X. And that's the relentless belief in oneself. You have to believe that you have the right to be successful, that despite your circumstances, that despite where you were born, that despite what family you were born into and everything around you, that you have the ability to win. So what are you planting today that will bloom tomorrow? And I'm telling you, it's not about a get rich quick scheme. It never has been. This has taken 10 years. This has literally taken 10 years. It's been the consistency and the belief of only investing in things I believe in. And we have all of those abilities with the internet. So cheers once again to the internet. Yay, entrepreneurship. People would go out of their way and tell me whatever I was building wasn't gonna work. 
and I would say bye I'm not asking for your permission I'm telling you what's gonna happen but I'm not gonna waste my breath on you let me get back to work and show you instead thank you guys comment below what your thoughts are I really enjoyed this channel and it's growing but it's really cool hey, yo,